Oh, they may be playing football And the crowd is yelling, kill the referee But no matter what the score When the clock strikes four Everything stops for tea Hi, and welcome to Spill the Tea The show for British expats Those that's going to become uh, British expats and anybody who just loves things British. My name's Ian. And my name is Sam. And on the show, you can expect celebrity interviews, features, and performances. But on today's show, let me tell you what's going on today, Ian. We've got Craig Murrin. He is the pension guy. We're going to talk about your British pensions while you live in the United States. And we've also got magician and comedian. And I can actually add a bunch more names to what he does. But we've got actual, uh, actually, we've got Paul Zenon on the show today. And uh, it's going to be fun, exciting. And I guess he's going to do something that's going surprise me that's what you were telling me well maybe maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see so how you, well we got back here we did we made it it's, it's funny how quickly the week goes by isn't it Ian I know and well, then, this... we, then Sunday night we start packing our little overnight bag for the show <laughs> <laughs> well it was this morning it was kind of like last minute but still yeah it's much still. easier for you well it does take you a while to put your makeup on Ian what are you talking about I don't have makeup yeah you always look like that flawless well thank you <laughs> so what did you do this weekend well, more of this, to be honest. It's been, I mean, actually, the feedback's been unbelievable. Incredible. Unbelievable. Really. Um, I mean, I've, I've looked at where the show's been shared and how people have commented yeah, yeah. and liked and engaged with us. And it's been really quite amazing because we've just done one show. I know, I know. And thank you so much for everybody who did watch and to shared and commented and liked and all that kind of fun stuff. The uh, Like you said, the, the feedback's been fantastic. It, it really has. It's funny because Ian assumed that a lot of the people commenting were people I knew. But I, I, I'm like, I, I don't know a lot of these people, oh, well, that's which is, good. I think, the most exciting part is outside of our circle of friends and family members, we've got people from all over the world I know. Well, yeah, we, we had Sweden, we had Greece, we had Australia. Yes. And that's, I mean, I didn't even get a chance to look through like every single comment. And it's like crazy, at least where they're coming from. It's but, amazing, isn't it? But please continue to share and to like um, and just let people know that we're, we're doing this because, you yeah. know, we really want to build this into something kind of cool. And if you know people that are you think would be a really interesting guest, for example, someone's got a, a British business that's really unique or um and a unique story how you ended up in, yeah. in the states then let us know well yeah. that's right and, and our first guest paul uh he'll be coming in a little while uh into the show he's going to be joining us via uh, skype so yes. you know it's it's possible for us to be able to connect with you wherever you are yeah it makes it really really easy so what did you do on the weekend i know we did you did a lot more of this yeah sure. well it's kind of a daily thing isn't it right now for us it, well, yeah well it was a bit <laughs> of a it was a bit of a worky weekend we had yeah. a, we actually had a, a show in this studio on Friday night with um, oh. uh, a good uh, friend of the studio, Matt Donnelly. He's uh, he's a great, he's a very funny guy, and he was testing out a new show uh, for the Las Vegas Strip. Nice uh, on uh, on Friday night, and we had just kind of sixty or seventy people in here. And how did that go? Nice. It was great. He even had as his opening act, he had uh, Pendulette. Uh, the magician Pendulette opening for him, <laughs> like you do, like you do. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, so that was fun. Yeah. You know? uh, and then, and then last night we uh, actually last night and tonight there's a show that uh, our company is producing over at Caesar's Palace. So for a singer that was on America's Got Talent, uh, his name's Daniel Emmett. And oh, so we've yeah. been, we've, he's a great singer. Yeah, we were, we've been uh, producing and, and directing that show. So and how many more shows are left? Tonight's the last <gasps> night. Oh. So yeah. get, you can get your tickets, Caesar's Palace. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you if you happen to be here in town, come and check us out tonight. Yeah. Last night, Daniel Emmett, Caesar's Palace. Do it. Buy a ticket. Yeah. Support the arts. Really important. So that was my. That was pretty much my my weekend. I'll tell you what my weekend was. Uh oh. <laughs> this could be dodgy. Downton. It could be dodging. Downton Abbey. I'm How not did give... I know we were going to get back to Downton Abbey? <sighs> I, I, it's a, it's it's a problem. It's an obsession. It clearly is. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but the show, the the movie, was just unbelievable. I'm living in the wrong time. I want someone who will dress me in all those beautiful dresses and blouses and do my hair and put my pajamas on before I go. To so bed. Jim won't do that for you. <laughs> no, he won't. He's in bed first, so forget that. <laughs> but I, I just I, what, what I like about the film, if even if you've not watched Downton Abbey, it's about an event that happens at Downton Abbey. So it doesn't right. matter if you don't know the characters, but if you do know the characters, it's even better. It's so exciting. I don't see any reason why they cannot do a sequel or another series. I, I don't know why. Do you think they'll go back to a series now <gasps> they've done the movie, now, now they've made that transition? I think they could. Honestly, I think they could, but I, I know it would probably be quite difficult to get everybody together. Right. I know it was for the movie, but and they shot it in six weeks is when, how they did that, six weeks of filming. It must have been fantastic to go that's, back after all those really years. That's really quick. That is really, yeah. So, wow. 
amazing. If you haven't been to see it, go and see it. I highly recommend it. People were clapping at the end. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I did that. And then I did something that was really um, important in life. And that was I um, created a, a chocolate bar. <laughs> on the Cadbury's website. So you can go... You can do that? Yes. You could, right now, they've got a contest going. So you go to Cadbury's website. And, and you can you, name it and you everything? You can choose all your flavors, what's going to be in the chocolate bar itself. Yeah. So I created the Rose Sparkle Dream chocolate bar. And it's a flavor of roses. I like florally things. And it's got uh, pieces of short shortbread in it. Oh, yeah. And edible glitter can you call it anything or do you, you think, can call it anything you i bet want. you there's limitations oh, i bet you could if you tried calling it something i bet i bet there's some cheeky socially words. not acceptable socially not acceptable yeah, so that's yeah. what i did but um if you if you win uh they i think it's going to be in, in the shops for three months something like that oh wow yeah and on that same note remember how snickers used to be called marathons yes and i still call them marathons yes they're going to be called marathons again for a very short period of time Bit of nostalgia there oh, for you. Oh, so they're not not permanently. Not just, permanently, no. Uh, but they won't do that over here then. No, no. They never knew it as marathon. They did never they? knew it as marathon. There's always been Snickers yeah. here. There's something about going back to those old names and you know what I mean. They're just right. like, oh, right, right. I'll have a marathon. <laughs> I know, right? So sticking with the um, with with the whole British TV accomplishment type accomplishment type of thing. <laughs> Get your teeth in, Ian. I will. Um, <laughs> the Emmys were last night. Yes. And uh, we did, we, not you and I. <laughs> we were, we were the red carpet. We, we, did, we did rather well. <laughs> the, the, the Brits did rather well last night. Yeah, you know what? They, <laughs> they, it always feels good when they, they snag some awards, yeah, the yeah. Oscars and those kind of things. Phoebe Waller Bridge. That's a fantastic name. It, it, I think it's a name. I think it's or a name. Or I just <laughs> called you something. I'm not, the, who knows? Um, she, of course, was the writer and star of Fleabag. Really? That's her name. Yes, that is a that is a genius series. Which was original, well, but it was originally a theatrical play. It was ri ri originally on stage. Really? Yeah. <gasps> and then, and she wrote that, and she starred in it, and then she's, took it to TV, and of course, incredible. it was a huge success wow. on TV, and and it won last night. <gasps> do you think? Well, now I, they're probably going to do another season, then, aren't they? Now <laughs> that she's oh, won sure. something, because I've been waiting so. for the next season. But she got she got best leading comedy actress. <gasps> Best comedy series and best comedy writing. So but, I mean, that's that's kind of a, that's a universal. That's unbelievable. But she, her facial expressions, I just, it's brilliant. Oh, I know. She's just brilliant. If you haven't watched it, you should check it out. It's it's um, you got to be prepared. It's, it's <laughs> especially the opening, the opening <laughs> five minutes or so. Yes. Yeah, is, you have uh, to be prepared. That's the it, best it lets, way. It lets you know what the show's about, which is very considerate of her. Yeah. Um, but no, it's very. It funny. can make it's, you a little like. It's extremely British. It, it is. In, in my view. And it can make you very cringe. It's very cringy and funny. And, I know. But she is brilliant. Right. I mean, a brilliant actress. So oh, that's fantastic that she won. I know. Game of Thrones also won some stuff. Nice. Last season and everything. Um, so they, they, they represented. Um, and then the other thing they did do is they, they, uh, they actually showed uh, a 20-second preview for the next season of The Crown. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. With, uh, what's the name of the Queen? Who? I got Phoebe Waller Bridge. Don't expect me to try to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. I know. I can't remember. I can't remember. Like last name week, then. I couldn't remember Your Matthew's name? name from Downton Abbey. Oh, that's right. Someone, someone, so, help, someone help me out in the know. comments, which I'm really thrilled about that because it helps us along a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, we do actually have uh, comments up here today, so we can see. So, Sarah McNeil, yes, you heard about the marathon and Snickers thing, <laughs> which is awesome. I'm very excited about chocolate, see, so that's the, good to know. So, by the, all means, do do type in. We can actually has their priorities in place. It's wonderful. They, they do. They do. <laughs> it but, always comes um, back to the to chocolate or tea or something like that. It does, that. doesn't it? So, so back to so yeah so sorry I got won? I got who else won I don't know I just all I know is the Game of Thrones and and Fleabag I liked it when um, Olivia what's her name won No that is Olivia that's that's who the oh, Queen she's is got, Oh really Yes she's another brilliant actress too Olivia Nunn no, no no somebody's going to tell us someone someone tell us <laughs> It's going it's going to be that But no the teaser we're talking about the teaser the teaser was very it was it was very well done it was only was 20 it? seconds it was very subtle There's one thing the Brits do we're very good at these period dramas aren't it's we It's true Well and but I think the the crown's got a different kind of vibe to it it's yeah, kind of it seems it feels more even though it's obviously going back a ways but it feels it has a different kind of sense to it it, it doesn't does. feel like 
the pole darks and the pole dark, the, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. But um, another actress that's going to be in in this season, I believe, I think it's this season. Might be a, perhaps it's even the next season. It's going to be Gillian Anderson, you know, of X Files. Now, isn't she British? No, this what is, is the thing. This? She's like one of those Madonna British people. She's she's <laughs> totally American. Lives in the UK now. Has adopted the British accent um, as her own. She had me fooled. And she's going to be playing Margaret Thatcher. Oh, I can see that though. I With, could. Uh, yeah, I can totally see that. I could, but she actually does it very well. Wow. You know, there's. It's usually the case. Not saying. Always the case, but it's always harder. Just said always for <laughs> Americans to play British roles compared to the yeah. British actors playing American yes. roles. Not saying they can't, and I'm sure they do right. a fantastic job, but it seems to be like it's, it goes the other way more often. Yes, Spider Man, you know, he's he plays American and he's English. Oh, that's right, yeah. You go, we're terrible on names well, today. Like, um, Olivia here Coleman. Here I go again. It's like, um, I can't remember Olivia his name. Olivia Coleman. That's, that's, that's who it is. Thanks to, thanks to oh, our thank reminder you. here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and Spider-Man is. <laughs> we're just going to have puppets here behind. We're going to have puppets and exactly. controllers and tell us what to say. We know what we know. Our brains are not in, in order today. It's about as far as it goes. But um, no, it's been, a, it's been a good weekend. I really enjoy looking at the, watch the red carpet. I love to look at the dresses. I yeah. just think they're so outlandish, outlandish and fabulous. And, you know, you can go over the top, can't you? you know? Oh, you can. Yeah. You can. I know, I know. Oh. But, and one other thing on entertainment news, yes. if you will. And speaking of... Uh, Theatre, as we did with the flea bag. You ready for this one? Go on. Diana the Musical. Coming to Broadway. Okay. Diana the Musical. That sounds interesting. How well, do I feel about that? March 2020 is when it starts. Yes. And it's, it's actually been running already. It's not a brand new production. I guess they've been touring it a little bit just to kind of test it out and everything. But um, let me give you three of the songs that are going to be in the show. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Snap Click. What song's that? paparazzi reference oh okay oh ooh, yeah i don't know yeah welcome to the windsors okay <laughs> <laughs> we are the windsors you know <laughs> top hat and tails chorus lines the queen the, <laughs> the queen and prince philip doing high what, kicks what's the third one the third one this is the best one here comes james hewitt no that's the name <gasps> of a song oh i don't know oh, i don't know how i feel about that on many levels, actually, I think that title's wrong, but still. Um, <laughs> it's not that creative, is and it? And really? it's billed as the woman that rocked the royals. I, you I know. don't know. And I... it covers, it covers, it covers all aspects of her life. Does and, it really? And, oh, yeah. and the awful part too. It, I, I don't know what the name of the song is for that one, but oh my I mean, gosh. I don't know. I, don't I think know. that sometimes you can't explain why you think something's a good idea or a bad idea. You just get the feeling about it. Yeah. And I feel like, Ugh. but I, but I think people will go. Well, yeah. I, I just think if it's on Broadway, yeah. the tourist component, yeah. or just to be like, you've got to be kidding me. I've got to go and see I've this to believe this. I've got to go and see this. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not. I'm Did not. Did you know this, that um, you could not write about uh, a monarch until after 100 years of their coronation? Uh, the, lo it's gone, the law's gone away now, but it used to be that you couldn't write about them. Oh. It was very disrespectful. So, you know, you had... Um, Alice in Wonderland with the Queen of Hearts, which was really a dig at Queen Victoria. Right. But she, the, you, they had to write in that right. kind of way, that social commentary, but in a way that you're like, not really, but this is really what I'm writing about. Oh, man. It's now gone away. I wish that would happen now for a few other people, but still, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that a little interesting fact? It, it is. Yeah, because it, it was is, very it disrespectful. Is. Well, it still is without that law sometimes, well, you know. know. You've got to... You've got to strike the right balance, it I is, think. It is a bit. But I'm not sure about that musical. No, exactly. It just seems weird. I'm thinking Top Hat and Tails. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got a few more comments. We've got uh, Jeremy Maxfield Brock. Good morning, ladies and gents. Uh, Mark Langley. Nice guitar. That is a nice guitar yes. back there. You can, I don't know if you can see that back there. That, that actually uh, uh, has a, a signature from our, one of our former guests on it from last week. <laughs> um, Mr. Joe Elliott did actually sign that guitar for us, so yeah. that was very nice. If you missed that interview, you can um, just scroll back on our Facebook page. Just the interview is there by itself. If you if you missed it, yes. And thank you, Nicole. Tom Holland. <laughs> yes, thank goodness for that. Yeah, not like we don't know anybody anybody's name. It's terrible, isn't it? Hard enough with me own. <laughs> so. Who's our first guest? I think it's time for the first yeah, guest. Yeah, let's talk about let's talk about celebrity guests that we've got coming on. Yeah, well, 
So, our first guest today is, uh, I, 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 he, he is a published author to start with, which isn't even his primary thing, but he's a published author. He's a, a magician, he's a comedian, he's been on TV, he's been on film, I expect, somewhere. I'm sure he'd be able to tell, tell us whether he has or he hasn't, but he's oh, pretty much done everything. Well, yeah, theatre. Theatre, oh yes, a theatrical production yeah. he's just been doing. Um, he's performed all over the world. He's actually one of the UK's most respected magicians, a career spanning uh, about 400 years, I believe, at this point. <laughs> uh, and I am, in fact, talking about our good friend, Mr. Paul Zenon. Uh, was that the kind we were thinking of? No. <laughs> it's a bit of a long shot, but it's worth a go. Of, you know. See, basically, I'm going to be doing comedy and magic. So if something's not funny, it's a trick. <laughs> um, and not the ideal situation for doing magic either. So some of the people sat right at the sides here and here might actually spot how I do a couple of these tricks. And the same goes for the people in front and at the back as well. <laughs> if you're rubbish, you're rubbish. It's not worth worrying about. Interesting though, the biggest round of applause in the act was for drinking a pint of beer. <laughs> Spent years learning that other stuff. I even know I'd just come on and drunk five pints of beer. But thanks for being smashing. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, here we are. We have Mr. Paul Zen on with us live from the UK. And I'm going to be looking down here because we've actually got him on the screen here. I don't want to be so rude as to look away from you, but, but we, we know that you're there and welcome. Thank you. Good morning, evening, whatever. Well, it's, it's light outside. <laughs> I can still see your window back there. It is. It's been a miserable day. It's kind, of a, it's kind of coming up to sort of sunset in about half an hour, I think, here, if there was a sun. If there was a sun. So, <laughs> so pretty typical then, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I think my, my introduction of you was very limited. I actually yes. think you've done way more in your career than, yeah. I, than I, I have said. I, I read that Wikipedia. I, I read your Wikipedia, Paul, and it was, I, I needed to clock in and clock out. It's like a whole shift of reading of, of everything that you've done. And I'm sure it probably doesn't include everything because no, you've done a lot. No, it's just down to being old, really. <laughs> yeah, it's much longer the older we get. Pretty I'm much. I'm actually a real wizard. I'm actually 230 years old. <laughs> well done, well done. Now, for... Um, all kind of disclaimers aside, Paul and I are actually friends, and we've probably been friends for like, I don't know, over 20 years or so. It's a lot more than that, actually. It's uh, since the late 80s, round about. Well, I said that's how long we've been friends. I didn't say I liked you before then, <laughs> really. But no, 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 you are right, actually. Well, actually, no, it is. It's, it's like 90, yeah, it's about, yeah, about. Uh, mm, so how did you meet, long. though? So how did you two I was meet? A child bride. How did yeah? How did we meet? Yeah. Um, well, it was it was originally through uh, a, a connection of ours, uh, Mr. Paul Stone. Um, That's right. Who's and, based in Vegas now? Who is um, based in Vegas too? Another expat. Yeah. Another expat. And uh, and then we did some kind of corporate events together and some shows. And then you uh, yeah. you actually I remember this conversation. You you came up to me at the London Palladium. We were doing a charity event there. And Name I know. Oh, get that one later. <laughs> and uh, to tell us about this this uh, BBC kids TV show that you were going to be doing, and wanted to talk yeah. to uh, myself and Amanda about um, about being on it. Yeah, well, it was kind of the um, I'd done a couple of series called Tricky Business, which was kind of a comedy drama thing set in a initially in a magic shop and then a kind of magic theatre. And then the following year, I got offered a kind of magazine type show, uh, which was a, basically magic and, and pop music called Tricks and Tracks. See what they did uh, with the <laughs> name there. And so I kind of had this idea of having uh, making it a bit more contemporary than the uh, sort of, you know the other magic stuff that was around at the time uh, by having robot assistants. Uh, and I remember the, uh, the meeting with the producer where he initially said, uh, well, we've got access to the BBC costume department, we've got all the Doctor Who stuff, can't we just get a couple of people and dress them up as robots? And I said no, and that's how you got the gig. <laughs> well, and, and there's a lot more information that probably needs to be framed out relative to that, which we absolutely don't have time for today. <laughs> that said, I know we do have uh, an image from 
way back from Tricks and Tracks because I'd like to embarrass you as much as possible to show that you once were young. Okay. Which, which, I, I can't actually. I can't see that. Which which one is it? Um, well, actually, it's it's <laughs> one with you and uh, and the other robot, Arby, which is our good friend Roger Bunnage. That's a great outfit. Uh, you are looking exceptionally young there. And in outfit. fact, I think there's even another one that's that we've got, which is 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 the whole the whole team with with Sally Gray and and some other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the whole lot. But anyway, that's that's <laughs> that's how far we go back for sure. Yes, and yeah, the reason I look young is because I was. It's about thirty odd years ago. <laughs> but you, you didn't seem it then either, so I don't know. It's weird. Well, it's, it's, a, it's an advantage to starting off looking rough, and then you can grow into it. You know. That's true. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But no, your career really has taken so many different kind of directions, and you know, geographically. <laughs> Downturns, <laughs> that's a whole new show, Downturn Abbey. It's 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 based <laughs> about entertainers' careers that aren't quite where they yeah, used to be. Yeah, going to is. the graveyard. I'm not getting the lead in that. <laughs> as long as they don't kill you. So so yeah. So beyond that, I mean, obviously, even right now, you you're uh, on countdown. How how do you end up on countdown as a regular fixture? It was it was well, it was a weird one actually. Uh, it's been. Almost 16 years since I started doing Countdown. There was a little three-year gap when I didn't do it, but other than that, 16 years. Um, and it was through doing a comedy club uh, near the BBC in London, and uh, even though it's a Channel 4 show, um, right. somebody came up to me after this show and said, my, uh, my girlfriend's a bit drunk, and she's a producer on Countdown, and she's interested in being, uh, on you being on the show, and I thought it was a wind-up. Um, so I gave my kind of phone number and all the rest of it, and sure enough, the next week I got a call and just invited to be on it. And... Uh, not look back since, really. It was a really odd one, you know? That's, um, that's but crazy. I'm doing more uh, on Tuesday, actually, recording another batch. Oh, yeah. We record, record five in a day, uh, wow. five episodes. So it kind of gets a bit, uh, it's a bit odd, you know, you think, because it's a very formulaic show. So by the end of, you know, part three of show two, you're thinking, is this part with part one of show five or what? You know, you, you get right. lost in it. But, uh, yeah. but it obviously eats a lot of material as well. As no, of course, of course, of course. Well, about it. 180 tricks on there so far. So. That's crazy. Well, and of, and of course, you also chewed up a lot of material on your, your Channel 4 specials, um, yeah. going back a, you know, a few years. There were a few years, yeah. That was, that was kind of 98 to 2001, I think. We did, uh, we did four one-hour Street Magic specials on, on Channel 4 and then um, another one, uh, one on ITV. Which got syndicated um, to Australia and various other countries as well, right? Yeah, it did really well internationally, though, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was just, just, you know, they can't start the whole Street Magic scene, really. No, well, uh, and he did, and actually, I, I can say this, because, well, Paul probably would say it, but he, he was doing Street Magic before David Blaine was. He before, was the pi pioneer. He was, and in yeah. fact, there was some remarkable similarities with some of the, the things that Paul did on his first that ended up on... Interesting. I'm just saying. How do you handle that, though, Paul, when you know it's, um, it's your material? How do with bitterness, this, usually. With bitterness, <laughs> usually. Yes, with, I just go and go and cry. Um, <laughs> there's, there's not really much you can do about it because you, you can't copyright a concept, you know. Mm. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not really possible to copyright a trick as such. So, um, you know, it, it, I take it as a compliment in some respects. Um, but as, you know, as, as a Brit doing a show in the UK, you're always going to be kind of looked at as the poor cousin from, you know, someone who's got a big budget for PR from the States, really. Right. Uh, so you just got to kind of bite it and get on with it, you know. But, uh, but no, it was, it was interesting and having to come up with that much material. I mean, we used to come up with uh, literally like uh, 70 or 80 ideas for a show, whittle it down to about 50, record about 30 of them, and maybe use 25 in the edit. You know, so had a lot of stuff to come up with. And, how, yeah, do you, how, do you, how do you catalog all 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 of these? I mean, what's your method of of you know going back <laughs> and looking at them or? How does yeah, that you're, work? You're assuming that I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Basically, yeah. I've just got cardboard boxes full of uh, scribbled on postcards and various things, which are, <laughs> oddly enough are over here on the floor now while I prepare for countdown <laughs> next week. Uh, but uh, no, it's very low tech, you know. I mean, still, still with kind of editing programs and things like that, I still use what they, what they call a paper edit, where I just scribble things on different uh, coloured bits of paper and then shuffle them around on the floor until I'm happy, you know, uh, and do it that way initially before doing it uh, oh, on wow. a technical level, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And whatever you have left, you then put into the books that you've published, which I did mention. Well, all the remainders. Yeah. All the remainders. <laughs> yeah. all, the, all the scraps, yes. It's the, the bubble and squeak of literature. Uh, <laughs> right. that's, a great, exactly. that's a great way of going on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've actually, I've only done really kind of three main books, but there's been kind of uh, lots of reissues of slightly different variations. So it looks as though I've written about 14, but it's actually only three. Well, um, we'll go with 14. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So with all this all this said and done, I mean, you know, 
Uh, and not not even mentioning your your theatrical productions in terms of linking rings, which was yeah. a, a sort of serious serious piece you did. It there was no comedy yeah, that, to it. Well, it's interesting because because I've done a little bit of acting. I mean, I did a couple of Shakespeare bits a few years back, just to sort of kind of get get out of the comfort. Let's kind of book comfort in that with pump. pantomime as well. Let's was, just make sure I, we yeah, don't. Yeah, I was going to ask pantomime. about that if he was going to do panto this year because I know he's already done panto. Did a lot of this year, actually. I, no, I, I don't, I'd like to do it again, actually. I, I mean, but only played a villain. I was playing Abenazza. Uh, oh, yeah. But, but Shakespeare the Panto, I mean, come on, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. It's, it, it's very doable. I mean, a lot of it is very sort of panto ish, the comedies, particularly. I, mean, I did uh, Merry Wives of Windsor, you know, yeah. so you've got all these. I was playing a, um, a drunk, petty criminal alcoholic called Bardolph, so basically method acting with that. Uh, <laughs> not that a far fetch. Pretty much a stretch. <laughs> uh, but, then, uh, but then we did that one where uh, its name shall not be mentioned. Um, and that was a real struggle, actually, uh, playing um, a witch, an assassin, and Lennox in, in that. And uh, you realise, actually, because you know, it's, not, it's, it's tragedy rather than a comedy, um, or they almost ended up as both. Um, but the problem is that, is that the audience knows Shakespeare better than the actors do a lot of the time, so there's no room for oh, right. And I realise it's the first thing I've done in 30-odd years um, where if it went wrong or I'd messed up, I couldn't funny my way out of it, you know? Right. So that was a real challenge. But on the back of doing that, I did this thing called Linking Rings that you mentioned, which was a sort of, it started off as a play about Houdini initially, or Houdini's right-hand man. But while I was writing it, my sort of friend and mentor up in Blackpool, I used to work in a magic shop as a teenager. So my friend Bill Thompson in the House of Secrets became ill and subsequently died. And it became a sort of parallel story because it was kind of the, uh, the story I was writing kind of mirrored my last week's with, with Bill, really. Right. So it became a very kind of personal autobiographical thing as well. Uh, and probably the most satisfying thing I've done, actually, show-wise. Now, that's uh, available totally That's available on DVD. We can actually it's, see it's, that uh, or uh, buy or it. Or as a download, actually, yeah. Um, you can get DVD or download. I think it just, it's, it's from a place called Murphy's Magic. Uh, it's a magic... Murphy's uh, Magic? Supply. Murphy's, as right. in the Irish name. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure so that we, we get a link to that on the website so that people can yeah, connect to it. Yeah, I think it's it. murphysmagic.com, and in the UK, it's um, a company called Big Blind Media, BBM. Um, so, yeah, you can get that there. Oh, very but good. That's, that's the most unusual thing I've done, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Paul, you've done so yeah. much. As I said, that Wikipedia is insane, absolutely insane. But what, what have you not done that you want to do? Oh, that's a good question. Um, finish paying off the mortgage. I think. Um, <laughs> that's a good start. That's a trick. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure, actually. I mean, uh, well, it probably leads on to uh, something you hopefully mentioned. I'd, I'd, I'd like to do a, a run in Vegas at some point, actually, where, with the show. Um, but other than that, it, it is a difficult one. So I've kind of, uh, I'd, I'd like to do more one-man play stuff. I've, I, I kind of discovered a love of storytelling, basically, while I was doing um, the Lincoln Rings thing. Um, and it's a sort of very different technique to doing, you know, straight stand-up comedy or magic or whatever. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. But I'd also like to do more factual programs as well. I'm really interested in the sort of history of magic and variety and comedy and all that kind of thing. Uh, I'm also helping out. There's a, a new um, museum project in Blackpool. Um, Blackpool, believe it or not, has never had a museum. And so there's one scheduled to open, I think it's um, spring... 21, and I've been kind of helping and advising on that, on the sort of magic and variety and sideshows front uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, if you don't know Blackpool, um, if you're watching as, a, as not an expat, it's the, how would you describe it? It's the Las Vegas of, <laughs> of um, Lancashire. That's, uh, that's Lancashire, very, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well, people generous. People just call Blackpool the Las Vegas of the North. There you it? go. So, uh, it, it should be reciprocal, really. <laughs> Yeah, it and, should be. And you just got the funding, didn't you? The final funding for the museum. That's right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big old thing. I mean, it's not a kind of old school uh, museum as such. It's very much a sort of uh, family visitor attraction thing. Uh, but they've already kind of, you know, secured lots of interesting exhibits. And it's very kind of interactive. Uh, it's going to be right next to the uh, tower uh, as well. So a really good uh, position for it between the tower and Coral Island. If nice, you know that, nice, nice, nice. Um, so, yeah, so I'm uh, continuing to be involved in that. So that's an ongoing kind of project I'm quite excited about, you know. And speaking uh, of the... Um, <laughs> I'm saying speaking Sorry, of, speaking of your, your desire to be in Las Vegas and have your own run here, well, <laughs> doesn't it just so happen that you will be here in Las Vegas... <laughs> Well, um, it's funny you should say that. It is funny you should say Do tell. I've heard a little rumour. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. He's actually, Paul's going to be at the uh, Valleys uh, right here on the Las Vegas Strip. I believe it's the 7th, 8th, 9th of uh, 
November. November? Yes, I yeah. think so. Yeah, just a little three-night run. Uh, and it's about a 200-seat showroom, I think. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we'll, um, again, we'll put so, some information yeah, on good. that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Looking forward to that. And you have an amazing producer for that for that show, I understand. Really? I've, I've not heard good things, personally. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, there's always room for improvement. <laughs> oh, break, breaking news. <laughs> yeah. Cancel show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, with that. No, no, no. You're, you're all right. but, but, you know, actually, when you, when you do come over, you'll have to come sit on our fabulous... Yes! Um, I will. Our, yeah, our little, our little booth. In fact, you know, this, uh, this, this booth that we're on um, actually has a magical history. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. No, well, yes, and one I can actually tell you. <laughs> having known you for about 30-odd years, I'm very sure it has. Oh, right, right, very <laughs> good. Well, this this here, and we're looking at it uh, full screen right now, um, actually used to be Pendulette's kitchen table. Like this, this, <laughs> breakfast area. This was his breakfast table. His, this table and the booth here was, was in Pendulette's house for, I don't even know, at least 10 years or so. It was a, the, He had a house called The Slammer. That's right. And, oh, that's um, what I heard about that. It was built like a, a sort of state penitentiary. But you, you, yeah, I mean, it was a, an eclectic mix of yeah. different influences. But they, he sold the lot and the house got demolished and this, this came out of it and he donated it to our, to our studio. So we're actually you having... You mean you've been skip diving? That's what you've been doing. <laughs> yes, that's yes, right. that's that's exactly what it was. <laughs> it sounded really good until you it said did, that. Until that, until the truth came out. But um, now, Paul, you're you're a member of the Magic Circle. It was founded in 1905. But you're a gold yeah. gold member. What does what does the gold bit mean? Well, well, te- technically, I'm a I'm a gold star member of the Earth Magic Circle. Um, um, it's it's so magical. It was like the old Tommy Cooper gag. It's a bit like the Secret Seven. It's so secret. I don't know who the other six are. Um, <laughs> it's, um, but it, it's kind of uh, the gold star bit. I'm not altogether sure. I think that's because I, I got awarded the inner membership thing because of performance. Because some people get uh, awarded it because of uh, uh, sort of literature for writing books on the history of magic or whatever it might be. Um, so the gold star, I think, uh, you know, refers to that. But uh, it gets, it's, I think it's the highest award you can get in magic, I think. Um, uh, but uh, no, I've been looking, I've, you know, not blowing on trumpet much, but I've, um, I've, got, I've, I've won a couple of awards the past couple of years from magic societies and all the rest of it. I've won about four different ones, um, which I'm kind of, you know, pleased about in one sense, but it does feel as though they're thinking, hang on, he's getting quite old now. We better sort this out. Before we <laughs> Give him an it, award. You know? It's true. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> <last> legs, <laughs> And when, when you come in, there's going to be a ton of stuff that we can talk about. There's so many things. But there is one topic I do want to uh, touch on briefly. So uh, you, a few years ago, you were sort of involved somewhat with the, um, uh, a, a fairly controversial story regarding uh, a stage medium, I guess you might call them, called Sally Morgan. Ah. You see, I had a feeling you might say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you, 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 you effectively just kind of called her out. Well, and you're not the first person to do it, but I think you were the loudest. Um, um, well, I, I, I kind of, you know, was looking at the time that I was doing a, a reasonable amount of TV stuff and all the rest of it. So when um, someone accused her, uh, we're talking about um, a, a stage name used to be Psychic Sally, but she's kind of uh, sort of changed it more to the Sally Morgan for the, the gravitas, a bit less tabloid, you know. Um, and someone accused her or suggested that she might be wearing an earpiece on stage uh, to receive messages, you know, from from the dead, obviously. Um, <laughs> and um, there was a whole hoo-ha about it. I got a phone call from a newspaper uh, asking to write an article about how mediums and psychics might do some of their stuff by natural means as opposed to supernatural. And that was the Daily did. Mail, right? Um, and then uh, and then I got invited to do uh, the programme this morning on TV with um, Phil Schofield and Holly Willoughby. Um, and I went on there and I'd managed to find a bit of footage of Sally Morgan walking off a stage somewhere, taking out an earpiece. Oh. Um, and uh, so at that point, it all kind of kicked off, and she took legal action against the newspaper and all the rest of it. She ended up getting an out-court settlement because they rather foolishly had uh, sort of claimed that she was cheating, pretty much, or, or assumed that, which, whether you believe that or not to be the case, um, you're not allowed to say it without... Hard, hard proof, and of right. course they didn't have the hard proof of what she was receiving through the earpiece, so she kind of got away with that. Um, however, there have been several cases uh, more recently where she's had a payout from other people, and that's not widely known to the press. Oh. Until now. Until oh. now. We've got another <laughs> exclusive. exclusive. 
the, the reason I kind of got involved in the whole thing uh, initially is because I, I used to do a little bit of kind of fortune telling and stuff when I was a teenager, when I was traveling as a, as a street performer uh, around the Greek islands and across Europe. Um, and I kind of realized that it, it's, you know, it's very easy to manipulate people using the same techniques that we do as, as magicians, you know. Um, so in the end, um, I, I kind of, you know, watched this footage of particularly Sally Morgan, but others, and basically impersonated, going to the voices of dead toddlers, knowing that, you know, uh, there's, there's relatives are likely to be in the audience. And it's just very distasteful. Yeah. Uh, I think what, one of the phrases was uh, grief vampires or misery leeches as a term for mediums, which I think profiting through people's, you know, bereavement is, is about as low as you can get. In fact, um, Houdini uh, referred to it as the uh, the filthiest profession in the world. Mm. Now, you know, and, and that's clearly, you know, the point we're making here. But do you... And I know that you are a bit of a, a, a sceptic, just generally, if you use that term in a very broad sense. But do you think there is a certain degree of something that we just don't know? Now, I'm not going to dig a hole and get into a whole other conversation here. But, I mean, do you think sure. that applies to everything and anything? Or do you think there are um, aspects to certain sort of things that we just don't know that, that do exist? Do you acknowledge that or do yeah, you just well, like absolutely. nothing? absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it's self-evident uh, uh, that, you know, people always say, people who believe in psychics and that kind of thing always say, oh, well, we can't know everything uh, and until radio was discovered, we, you couldn't touch or feel radio waves and all that kind of stuff. So, of course, there's stuff out there that's not discovered. However, there's absolutely zero evidence uh, ever of anybody showing that they've got paranormal so-called powers uh, by being psychic in any respect. Um, so there'll be people that can go, you know, probably write in now and, and say, oh, well, my auntie said this and he, she, she went to see a medium and she told her things that she couldn't possibly have known. But it's very subjective. There is no actual objective scientific evidence. So by being a sceptic, I'm actually just pro-science because mm. science doesn't automatically assume that it's always right about everything. But what it does is alter its opinion once something is discovered. Or okay. Proven. Yeah. Um, so basically what, what I'd suggest, you know, what I believe in is, is just promoting critical thinking. Uh, basically, so it's mm -hmm. basically just looking at things, considering the various options, uh, and making your decision based on the most li likely, you know, sort right. of uh, uh, set up for the whole uh, process. So, um, you know, you, you look at someone like Darren Brown, who's just opened on Broadway in the States, uh, and he's doing things that you can't possibly explain. He's telling you things he couldn't possibly have known, and he fully admits he's doing it by entirely natural methods. It's just applied psychology. So if he can do that, why would you assume that someone sat in a caravan on a pier uh, knows more about your future than anyone else does, you know? Right, right. Now, mm. when you did this morning, and, and people can look this up on, on YouTube, probably Paul's end on this morning, you sort of got into a bit of a debate with a, with somebody who was representing kind of the 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 medium community, if you want. I'm not even sure if that's the right term. Yeah. But you yeah. get you She's actually did uh, Lee Catherine. Yeah. Right now, you did this kind of thing. There was almost like a little, uh, um, I'd say a test, but it was like a, a little example of the of the power of, of suggestion or, or or what would you call that? It's not really. Uh, well, the, the things I were, I think you referred to is uh, I think which is generally known as Barnum statements. Um, which are kind of linked with cold reading. Cold reading is basically saying things about people, throwing it out there and watching their reactions to it. Uh, the, the statements sound very specific, um, but they actually apply to most people. So, so could we, like can we do it? Yeah, go on, let's do it. Okay, we've got to try to remember. <laughs> yeah, so um, a quite a common one is that um, one of the two of you there has got possibly, now bearing in mind I can only see you from kind of, Sort of, you know, stomach upwards or whatever, and I assume you're wearing trousers. I know what you're like. <laughs> uh, Not always. Uh, <laughs> but um, a, what have you got? Possibly got a small scar, uh, a non-surgical scar, somewhere by your by your knee on this side. That. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and me too. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah, I've got yeah. One on my knee. Both of you do. Yeah. Yes. Well, one on my knee and one okay. on my arm, which is right next to my knee right now. <laughs> Well, you know, it may have a hole there as well. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, though, you do tend to, uh, you know, uh, a quite a common thing is, is to tell you that you basically um, got, uh, you make your friends very easy, you're quite gregarious. However, you find it very hard to trust people because at some point someone's let you down and you felt betrayed. So uh, a fault these days is to tend to bottle things up rather than just kind of let it out <laughs> as you go along. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's, there's someone in your family, uh, an, an older gentleman, uh, who's who's got a very distinctive laugh, um, and his, his laugh made you laugh. 
um, whatever. But he's he's kind of holding up his hands, but he had very uh, very sort of big hands, quite sort of. Um, I'm guessing he was kind of working class because they're quite sort of callous, quite rough hewn. But he was always proud of the fact that he kind of. I think one of his phrases was something like, you know, a fair day's work for a safe, fair day's pay. He was very, very much a kind of work ethic person. Is that right? <laughs> that would be my dad. Right. I think sure. it would be, a, it'd be a, an <laughs> uncle. <laughs> of, it's it's a letter, letter, letter B or R. B or R related to him. Is that right? Uh... Related to him, that's the thing. Well, then, does it relate? Is, it, is his name, does it involve a B or an R? Does it start with a B or an R? No. Not no. mine. Okay. But there's, but there is a someone. Is, is there a Brian in your family somewhere? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was my dad. But, okay. but, but well, in this particular family, example, yeah, yeah. you, you know, we, yeah. we do yeah. know each other. I didn't other, know but... that. I didn't know you. Don't Did know you know? Actually, no, no. Are you really oh. friends? <laughs> yeah. Who are you? <laughs> wow. But okay. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the sort of thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's. Yes. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's like broad, but at the same time, people channel. You yeah, know, and and I get it. I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, when you're doing it on stage in front of a load of people, you'll see somebody's reaction, someone will nudge someone, and you go, maybe it's not you, maybe it's the next person next uh, to you. Or, or they'll say something out loud, which the rest of the theatre can't hear, right. but you're just going to store that, and then you might come back to it 20 minutes later and go, yeah. is there a, you know, is there a Nelly somewhere in your family? That's because you've actually picked it up earlier, you know? Wow. Well, then you've got, you, you, you know, the bigger the audience, the better your odds are, aren't they? Oh, exactly. Or people exactly. falling into that. Exactly. Them. Really interesting. So I think we should probably, you know, th- uh, we could talk for another hour hour with you easily um well we will do when i come over well yes. exactly and you can you can be right yeah. here and we can talk about all the other stuff that, that we want to cram in now but um yeah. for did now I that was over in, uh, early november the one now did i mention that was over early november? yeah <laughs> well, you just did you just did it twice actually just then so yeah yeah bally's so seventh eighth ninth yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah fantastic producer <laughs> that's the one that's the one <laughs> paul thank you so much yeah it's been great for, for being here Pleasure. One last thing. Was that the card you were thinking of? <laughs> Glad he was, actually. Bit of a long shot, but it's worth a go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to Paul. Thank uh, you. We'll Pleasure. see you here, right here in the studio in about a month or so's time. Look forward to Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Take see care, you mate. Soon. Bye. See you then. That was fun. Did you like that? Yes, I did like that. That was fun, wasn't it? It's great entertainment, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he's so fascinating. There's so many stories. I mean, I, I yeah. got them racked up. And we could just... We'll have to have him for another... The whole hour yeah, next time. Yeah, I mean, the stuff that I read and looked at, I just thought, how, how has someone done this in their lifetime? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, but, yeah. but it's all kind of centred around, you know, entertainment, magic, that kind of stuff. And, right. I mean, some of the facts here, you know, he's a member of the Brighton Shakespeare Company, if you didn't know. Yeah, well, he lives in Brighton. Oh, there you go. And yeah. he's a member of that you know uh, born in skipton he, he worked in the magic shop in blackpool i mean <laughs> there's, yeah. there's some really interesting things about him um uh he has a charity as well oh he does that's of, right you're the wonder that's bust right. and lots of charity for senior community so yeah we're all about the charity that's yeah, for sure it's really lovely sure. that yeah wow, that was good that was fun i know well we've got more to talk about we have you know who we've got coming on the show right now right now this second is we've got craig murrin he is our pension guy and I know that people are going to go, oh, pensions? But what Craig does is so unique that I didn't even know this was even available, what he does. Well, you know, in part of our community. When we first started out on this thing to do this show, we you know one of the things was we don't want to just make it all entertainment to you. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of British expats out there who, you know, it'd be nice to have a place to have uh, information on, yes. on relevant and interesting topics yeah. that really apply to them. So yeah. this is kind of our ability to to step into that world. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is a great example. I know it's going to help a lot of people. Exactly. I mean, it's got me curious now. I know. Well, like, should, we, oh, should we get Craig let's in? Let's bring Craig in. He, Come on in, We need Craig. to give him a cup of let's, tea is yeah, what we, we need I'm to gonna, do. I'm going to move around to this You mic. come around here and we'll have some tea. <gasps> oh... Kit Kat, give me a break, give me a break. We have, we have Kit Kats going on. Right, let's get you set up. Right, you're right there, that's good. Wonderful. How oh. are you? I'm, I'm very good. How are you, sir? <laughs> very well, good. Look at you looking very dapper. Yes. I thought make an effort. He looks fabulous. Yeah, for sure, for sure. This now, isn't the daily... Uh, Outfit. It's not. <laughs> I'm, I work uh, remotely, so I'm usually in a pair of shorts. Oh, so you really did so make it. I really did. For us. You know, you need to tell everybody what we do, I did though. My hair for you. you work from home, I work from home. What do we do? We send pictures of our dogs to each other during the day. <laughs> what our dogs are doing next my, to my us while we're working. My boss might be listening to this, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we have to we have to show everybody what our, our dogs oh, are doing while we're, actually, we're working. We're actually doing the tea. We're doing the tea. Um, so now, where go. are you from, Craig? I'm from Bristol originally. Bristol. 
Good old Bristol. Uh, been out in Vegas now two years. Like it's directly from, from the UK? No, to... we lived in the Middle East for a while. I lived in Dubai for just over eight years. Really? Where oh, okay. I met my beautiful wife, who is uh, American. And that's what brought us to, to the States. How did you end up in Dubai first and then, you know, made your way over here? How did that happen? Um, the credit crunch hit in the UK. Yeah. Um, offices were being closed in the company I worked for. Huh. I had the opportunity. A friend of mine was working out there and said, hey, come on out. Come and join me. That was it. And the sun was shining. The weather was good. So I felt, you know what? How quickly did you make that decision? Was it a long, you know, like, been, I better think about uh, this? It's been bugging me for about a year. Okay. To go out there. Um, but I made the decision finally in, in about five minutes. Wow. I was sitting in his swimming pool drinking a Corona and I was like, okay, I could That'll do this help. for a while. <laughs> it will. Now, I mean, there is, there? there's quite an expat yeah. community in Dubai, right? That's huge, yeah. I mean, 95% of the people that live in the Middle East are, I think it's 95%, are, uh, are expats. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's 95? interesting. I've been to Dubai a wow. few times and, mm -hmm. and, I mean, the first time was, wow. 300 years ago but Don't it's it's i mean just seeing the place evolve it's been crazy yeah. you know since i think the um even just from the 80s up to 2000 and, and now how different it is yeah yeah and with in the, the last two years it's the, changed a lot is it the Bur Burj, Burj Khalifa, Khalifa. Yeah, yeah that's right I, I i was there when that was being built and okay. it just didn't look real it looked almost like a movie uh they call it a match you know where yeah. it's like a painting uh, of this sort of building being sort of in construction it was slightly hazy and it just didn't look real it literally just so stand, it stands out from from the crowd over there it really does it's, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. huge wow so wow. marrying nicole is that why you moved to the states um i want she wanted to move somewhere else and i said let's go to the us and we'll build something here and then we'll look at it after so that just two years back yeah here. june 2017. you just had your anniversary didn't you 10 years 10 years of le leaving the UK on the 17th of September, 2009. Gosh, time for a cup of tea then, because you is. know, tea, use tea for everything. I'm <laughs> like having tea today, this is the first one. <laughs> there you go. I'm trying to do it quietly, because otherwise you get that. I know, yes. all the chinging. It's fine though. You get Pension. Sugar? No, I'm good, thank so you. So pensions. Yes, exciting stuff. I mean, it's got me thinking Yay. now. <laughs> well, because I'm like, okay, you I, say that, but am it, I owing something? I, am I missing out on something too? Maybe. I could well, be. that's the thing, I mean, we all, we all, but we're off to the various parts of the world mm -hmm. and um you know there's a just we figure out what we're going to be doing wherever we live you know in our own kind of insurance or pensions whatever it might be locally yeah. but i mean of course there's a lot that the lives we've had back in the uk and and how do they relate to to where we are mm. now really? some people yeah. just forget I, I think that is the case you you come here you start a brand new life you start getting accustomed to how things happen here and then and i think a lot of people also think well that pension's for when, for if I lived there. Yeah. They don't think that they have any claim to that living somewhere else. But also, if you're not taking the money out of your account, putting it into something, then you don't maybe realise it's going on. Yeah. So you just leave thinking there's nothing there. Yeah. Um, and I've found pensions for people that honestly didn't even realise. Like a guy in Arizona, there was a $15,000 lump sum sent to him, which he never knew he was entitled to. Just sitting there yeah. waiting wow. to be claimed found it for him and uh, yeah off it went that's why i think this is going to be a really a really good segment for us because you you get asked questions obviously yeah. all the time but we're going to cover the top 10 most frequently asked questions um the first one is how on earth do i go and check my state pension well, yeah, contributions like, this guy obviously was sitting on fifteen thousand pounds yeah that he didn't know about so i mean what is the first point of reference for that first thing for state pension is to go onto the hmrc website in the uk um just literally type into google state pension or type in hmrc and follow the prompts you put in your national insurance number yeah and we actually got the link showing on the screen right now oh, so, okay so yeah so can... you just click on the link follow your uh, follow the prompts put all your information in it'll tell you what you're due to get <gasps> From the government. If anyone finds that happening, you need to <laughs> you need to let us know. Just from this conversation, if you find some money yeah. you didn't know you had. And you know what yeah. we'll do? We'll actually type that link into the comments here as well. So yes. that people can do have a direct yeah. clickable link. So we'll make sure that happens. It's a real simple process. And the, the website has come on so far over the years that it, I did mine. I think it took 10 minutes to locate my state pension and how much I was going to be getting, which was about £68 a week in retirement. But... It's my money. It's your money. Yeah. Exactly. You've put it hey. in so you want to be able to, well get to, back. to get it out. Um, this is a question you get uh, asked. My pension provider doesn't offer the option I want. Um, what do you mean by they don't offer the option that you want? So you, might, the you might not want to take your pension at okay. 60 or 65 or something. You might want to leave it. You might want to take a, a lesser amount. You, you just want maybe want some flexibility. I see. So some pension companies in the UK won't 
allow that flexibility. And then what do you do if they don't? Can you go... They should give you the option to move that pension into something that you have some more flexibility on. I see. So if you don't like what they're offering you, you should be able to, to do something else with it. And that's when my company and me comes in uh, and gives you that advice and sort of says, well, this is what you could do. This is what they're offering you. Let's look at your options. So some of those options are, like you say, you know, you don't want to draw as much out as yeah. you thought, you know, so you can obviously make it, you know. Sp but yeah, if you're longer. if you're also working here, yeah. you might not want to start receiving your pension because that might put you into a different tax bracket or something like that. Ah. So you might just want to stagger the income slightly. Ah, that's really interesting. Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea. I, I said that's the first thing I'm going to do when I get home. I'm going to go on the yeah. website. <laughs> right, right. Now, some... some uh, expats, they they lived outside the UK for a very long time. Some yep. even have probably moved, um, you know, when they were when they were quite young. So you know, if people have only wa worked in the UK for a short amount of time, yep. um, how do they or can they get a full government pension? What does what? How does that work? Uh, you can, but you're going to have to probably make up some missed contributions um, for the for the UK government. So again, go onto the HMRC, HMRC website, and you can find out how much you've contributed, however many years you worked in the UK. And it'll also show you what you would have to pay to make up the missed contribution so you can get a full state pension. I but that would be see. worth still doing, we assume. It's certainly worth looking at. And then you can look at the numbers. Is it worth doing that? And if you're in here uh, in the US, you can add a, um, compare it against maybe paying into a 401k instead. So you can see, oh, is it right. worth me putting my money into my UK state pension or should I do something here? That but again, it's it speak to a professional and get some advice on that. Yeah. I mean, um, you, you do you. I mean, you do you do more than just the pensions. Yes. Don't you? you do financial advice. Yeah, financial advice here for, for, kind of for Americans as well, 401ks and IRAs and things. Yeah, so yeah. here's another thing: uh, Does the money have to go into a British bank, or does it? Can it be sent to an American bank? It can be sent to any bank, anywhere, anywhere in the world. So yeah, you can get your UK pension paid into anything, but you've got to remember it's coming in pounds sterling. So. You're oh. going to have a currency issue. Yeah. You're going to have potentially um, bank charges to, to pay to another bank account. So mm. take that into account. If you're receiving yeah. your £68 a week from your state pension, am I going to be paying £30 in fees just to get it here and then a currency transaction? Is yeah. it? Is it worthwhile? So what's, so, your, so what's your option then? If, if you decide I'm going to keep it in my British account, you know, just when I you mean, go you, home, go and draw it the out. savings account, yeah, maybe. Yeah, just go you home. can put, yeah. in, um, put it into a UK bank account if you still have one of those. Um, I know Barclays will, uh, will set up offshore bank accounts for American citizens here, so you can potentially have it into a sterling offshore bank account. But again, that all has to be disclosed to the IRS, etc., yeah. etc. But yeah, you can, you can get it sent to any account you want. Does, do, does your pension have to be disclosed to the IRS? Yeah. So regardless of you know which bank it's in the fact that you're receiving it yeah everything okay. yeah right. everything here i mean speak to a, a cpa and get a professional tax opinion but everything has to be disclosed to the irs yeah, yeah. so then it comes on to tax which yeah which is basically so if you are bringing yeah. that I'm out. over i can't talk about it. yeah well, but, but i mean if, it, if you're bringing it in from from the uk then it's it's taxable yeah. I assume. anything's taxable yeah. and you would just talk to your cpa get, get, get an accountant and have a chat with them about anything anything to do with taxes yeah, yeah. rather than guess yeah that's definitely that, don't guess it's scary territory when you try to Especially do that kind here. of stuff on by yourself and and so much changes with the tax codes and everything that it's like no yeah. go to always go to your get, professional always get advice <laughs> that's for sure. right um I think this was probably applied to, to Ian and myself. I worked in the UK for numerous companies, you know, where you just work for so many different, you know, uh, companies. How do you find out if you've got a pension? Um, that's what I do. So you come to me yeah. and I will contact every single employer that you've re ever worked for and find out if you had a pension. That, that's kind of the expertise that we bring to the table. So if you work for hmm. five or six different companies, if some of them uh, have gone bust or, or been bought by bigger companies, oh. we'll follow the paper trail uh, and find if you had a pension or not. I and we'll get a yes or a no answer. I would think that's difficult if you try to do that by yourself. So, like it's say, time so the, consuming, so Again, yeah. so the company's, you know, it's closed, it's no longer, you know, Yeah, and there's, a there's business. certain, if we, I mean, we're a big company, we've dealt with lots of pensions, so we may have already found it for someone else. So we can go, oh, yeah, we know exactly who to go to, where oh. to find it. And it's uh, an easy process. And we don't charge for that advice no either. Way. We do it all for free. That is a fantastic service. Yes, it's like yeah. being a detective, isn't it? It is, it is. And that's, 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 like that. that's so fun. That is quite exciting, though, when you find stuff and you piece it all together it for is. them. And it's, they have no it's, idea. It's really good, especially when you speak to someone. They say, no, I definitely haven't got anything. And I say, well, why don't we ask the question 
and see. Yeah. Well, you see, that was my first thought was, oh, I don't think I have anything. No, I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm talking yeah. to you. I've never had a real job, so I'm not <laughs> well, sure. There you go. Well, yeah. I had a couple of real ones. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> and back in the day, they, they had, really. um, sort of in the 80s, they had better pensions then than they do really? now. So um, you, you could actually be I might actually be asking you to do a bit of detective work there for me go. then. See? Yeah, it could happen. Gosh, I think that's so exciting. Um, but look, we already covered, you know, the company I used to work for is no longer around. What happened to my pension? <laughs> you know, but it's it'll be there. It'll be there. There's going to be a be paper there. trail. We'll be able to find it. All right. Now, now, once you've uh, once you've 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 gone, mm -hmm. once you've passed on, yeah. <laughs> what happens? I mean, is is there anything that I mean e each, to expect? Or? Each pension is going to be different. So most of them, I mean, the, the law, of, uh, law of average is 50% of it will go to your spouse in, okay. in the event of your death, um, okay. depending on if it's a defined benefit or defined contribution. But the best thing to do is... To, to, to date, not yeah. like a future. I mean, you can't really get a pension once you're gone. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> That'd be clever. Yeah, we'll give it yeah. a go, look into it. Yeah. But yeah, we, give me a call or, or drop me an email and we can actually look at what your pension is right now and I can tell you exactly what the benefits are going to be now and in the event of your death and there are options out there to change that oh good so it's almost like doing a will almost you've kind got to of, yeah. look at that and mm. see what your options are and, and this is the thing if we to. speak to people that have got you know sizable amounts of money in their pension do you really want to lose half of it when you die you'd rather probably give 100 percent of it to your family to your kids or even a local charity and i would you think a lot of people just don't know those terms you know exactly. until craig explains it to exactly. you exactly. exactly now i remember um when i was a kid you got this plastic card yeah it's plastic card with your national insurance That's number right. on it. Um, but, I mean, I've no idea where that would be now. So how do I find out my, my national <laughs> yeah. insurance number if I don't have a card from, like, That's a bit 400 of a long-winded situation. Not situation, long winded situation not situation long winded answer or, or process, sorry. You need to contact HMRC yeah. and ask them to send it to you. And they will not, I believe, give it to you over the telephone. So they but they'll have send it internationally? Right they will, yeah. And it takes some mail time. It. They'll mail it out to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, no so you email, it. no... No, but if you find um, old pay slips, usually it's on there. If you had an accountant back in the UK or old companies you worked for and you're still in contact with them, usually it'll be on that paperwork. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mine, mine is exactly the same as my twin sister's, except for the very last. I think I, I, I've got an A and she's got a B at the end. So I'll just ask, right. yeah, just ask her. I'll just ask her. I'll just ask my twin sister. Yours is the other one. She'll know what's going on. <laughs> I'm the other one. Whatever hers is, mine's the opposite. One. That's it, exactly. <laughs> um, now, here's the thing. What's the difference between a defined, because you mentioned it earlier, yeah. a defined benefit and a defined contribution pension? Okay, so a defined contribution pension is, is money that you've paid in. So it'll have a monetary value. You'll be able to see it, whether it's £100,000 or £200,000. That's the amount of money you've got, and you can take an income from that. Uh -huh. Whereas a defined benefit pension is a, a benefit that they're going to pay you. So the company will say, I will pay you £10,000 a year for the rest of your life. Oh, okay. So it's a benefit rather than a, a lump sum of money. So can you have both of those going yeah. on? Well, you've contributed and then they also pay yeah, back. Especially if you've worked for different companies, oh, you might yeah. have three defined contribution pensions and two defined benefit pensions. And we'll go and find all of those and come back to you and say, this is what you've got. These are your options. This Ooh. is what you can do with it. Hmm. Wow. What's the most amount of money you've found for anyone, would you say? Um, over... Three million pounds. What? No. Oh. No way. Now, yeah. did they have a clue that... No, they not that it was that much. They knew they, knew they, were, they, knew they, they had find something. something. Yeah. That, and that's the thing. Everyone knows they've got something. Or not everyone, but most of the people we deal with know they have something. They want to know what their options are. Was that when you got that, that, <laughs> that client come in, in, coming in, though, did you have that sense of, oh, this could be a good one? Like, or was it a surprise to you when you no, discovered No, no, we knew much? it was going to be a good amount. and yeah. uh, Not a good amount, a sizable amount. Um, and that's everybody we speak to. We kind of look for people with more experience because you have more options the longer you worked in the UK. Right. Yeah. So we look for the ones that are going to be one, two, three, four, five million. I hope you <gasps> find that much for me. Well, let's, have, let's, let's start. Yeah. <laughs> let's get going now. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm really curious. Wow. I, I think a lot of people, when, you, when you, they move to a different country, almost feels like, you know, back home is a past life. You do forget yeah. about all the things that you did there that you're now doing here. But, oh, I can only imagine how great it is when you tell people you found their money. It is. And, oh. and especially when they think they haven't got anything. And especially if they're retired. Yeah. And they, you know. They're or coming up close to retirement. Trying to figure yeah. out how, how they're going to, to live. Yeah. Oh, I think It's, it's life changing. 
It's a great yeah. business, though. Mm -hmm. It's so unique. I mean, I had no idea it even existed, this kind of service. And the well, fact that, that you do the one part for free. Yeah. But the searching and the finding out and giving you the information at the beginning is all zero cost. That's incredible. So now if people, you now you're based here in Las Vegas. I am. But if people are not based here, here in Las Vegas, can they still use your services? Yeah, we're still... all over the U.S. So my office is actually in Miami where all the, the guys I work with are. Hopefully some of them are, are listening and watching now. Um, but yeah, we're all across the U.S. So we jump on planes, we'll come and see you, sit down with you and explain it. That's why you travel so much. That is. He's always going somewhere. He's always on a jet plane. On a jet oh. plane. Not a Thomas Cook one, by the way. Anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Not oh, anymore. That's wow. sad. Wow. That's really sad. Yeah. I bet people are looking at their pensions from that if there were any available. <laughs> Yeah. For sure, and when something like that does happen, you've got to make sure that the pension pot was ring fenced so that that doesn't start being uh, being taken by um, the people that are owed money. Oh, oh wow. really? Mm -hmm. So you've got to get in quick. Well, no, you just got to. Just make sure I would it's have protected. thought that the accountants would have already made sure that that pension pot is out of the and secure for you. And things, yeah. Right, right. Now, so do the know. laws differ greatly between uh, the UK and certain countries, or is it is it what you're applying is is more of a, a British based system? What I'm saying yeah. is, is like if you're if you are in another country yep. and somebody's watching here and they think, I love Craig, I want to work with Craig, but I'm not in the US. We've got offices all over the place. You do? All over the globe, yeah. Ah. So if you do need some help and you're not in the US, then ping me an email and I can connect you with an advisor that's going to be close to you. And we, uh, again, that's going to be regulated email, in the region. You um, that we're going to make sure we have up on screen. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just looking at our comments right now. Um, Rob, Robin, she, <laughs> I, don't know, I think it's a girl, Robin, nope. uh, or a guy. Yep. Uh, looking for my national insurance number right now. Oh, yeah. So, oh, there's my sister. Hi, from Andy B. Creek. <laughs> she lives on the beach. <laughs> so there's the link there. Yeah, yeah, so the you can check because, uh, oh, my gosh, that's the first thing I'm doing as soon as yeah. we get off and the And it's free. The it'll air. take you 10 minutes, and then you'll know whether, and whether you're going to be entitled to £5 a week or £200 a week, or 168 is the most. Yeah, if you've contributed, you want to be able to get that back. Get your money back. Oh, fantastic. How, yeah. else, how else do people get hold of you, Craig? What's the easiest way? I mean, you've got email, you got your email and up there. mobile. Yeah, they're going to be the best. Uh... Well, and we'll put a, um, a, a link on the on the website, yeah. which is spillthetealive.com. Yep. And we'll make sure there's a connection there um, and possibly some of these links as well. Yes. So that people can connect with you. Yeah. Connect and with any, any questions, I mean, however small you think the question is, I'll gladly give you know, five, ten minutes and respond and answer. I mean, oh, I fantastic. see you in a lot of the, the British Facebook pages. Yes, you know? I get around a bit. Is it, I do, I I'm see a, you I'm puff. A, a bit of a Facebook slut. I see you <laughs> puffing <laughs> up when people go, they start asking these questions and then Craig's right there yeah. straight away. I mean, you're just waiting on that page. With I, I, I pretty much am, yeah. <laughs> but I can only imagine you've helped an incredible amount of people. Loads but of I people. think that's why uh, we also need to keep referencing Craig as the pension guy because then people will know, oh yeah, just get hold of the pension guy. That's it. Right. And you've got your own website. It's soon going to be soon live. Soon I'm working on right now yeah but Which for now we're using guy. your main the company, company one right now, website yeah. yeah which has a lot of hyphens in it it does so <laughs> Just click the link. It's a lot easier. Just click the link, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, you're very easily accessible, I would very say. Very easily accessible. And I'm, I'm very quick to respond on things as well. So I, I don't, tr I, if I get an email, whether it's 10 o'clock at night or 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm usually on it. Oh, you're, you're just fabulous. I try. I just mm. hope we get some, some good news stories out of having you on the show that, you Ooh. know, people let us know. Oh, yeah, do let us know. Yeah. You get, get some interesting stuff coming back. For sure. I'll definitely share oh, yeah. what I can. Yeah. Now, now, aside from yes. all this stuff, pensions. All the fun, exciting pension life. Yes. Because sometimes it can be a bit dry, those kind of topics. But it's exciting when you find Just money. Just because it's me, I bring the well, excitement. You do. The you pink do. tie is doing it for me today. They match my socks. They can't see the socks, but the guys Show in the office that. will know. Show us the socks. Come on. Show us the socks. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh good lord. <laughs> fantastic. The guys uh, in the office now. They understand. I like that. I like that. So outside of, of pensions yes. and, and helping people out and improving their lives by finding money, what do you do outside? What what What... What's unusual about you that we don't know? His socks. I just socks. say, yeah, the socks. That's it, over. Um, I recently joined the board of directors for the local Nevada SPCA here, the so, animal shelter. So that's the what we call, we're calling the, the new Nevada SPCA. The, the new Nevada SPCA, yeah. Because yeah, everybody's so gone. All the bad people are and, out. And all the fresh, fabulous we've got people nine are Nine new board members who are wonderful. And we've got a new executive director who is doing a fantastic job right now. And, and hopefully we'll build that into what it should have been yes. before. So, and so 
It started when I, we had I a have co- you to thank I know. for that. <laughs> we just had a coffee one day. Yes. And we love animals, so we were just talking about animals. Everything we do is very incestuous, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's like... It's the British thing, it though, is, isn't it? It is. It's how it the is. community works. You leave works. the UK and you literally go to whatever city you're you in find and you try your and people. sniff out do. the Brits. We yeah. do gravitate. You we're, find your tribe. Even, even if we leave, leave the UK and think, oh, that's the reason I left. And everything <laughs> else, you still end up kind of... Hanging having, out with everybody. You have to. It's the only ones that understand us. And the Canadians and the Australians, because we like to make sure we include yeah. those two they, they, you know. they do they qualify they do qualify because it's the same queen so we're, so yeah, we're good it, yeah. you know it's the all commonwealth the and same all that umbrella <laughs> um yeah we had a coffee we love animals uh, as i say we send pictures of our dogs all the time to each other and i got talking about local shelter and how they were looking for good people yeah. basically so now tell everybody your title with your I'm titles the, i'm the vice president of the board and i've um literally last week been appointed to the strategic lead or strategic planning lead as well to uh-huh. basically put a plan the next one year, two years, five years, ten years, twenty years. All from a cup of coffee with this All one. All from <laughs> this one. Bit of an influence. So, yeah, what, are you, you thanking her or are you uh, <laughs> so far so what good? Right, good. The more they, and more work. I mean, I'm t- every weekend I'm, I've got a board meeting. Tuesday night I've got a finance. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm on the finance committee as well for that. So well, you're perfect for that. I mean, what I looked at all the board members. I checked them all out, yeah. and I just think they bring so much to the They're table. Such a great group. It's important to have a board that's actually useful. Yeah. And I think that's what they've got. I'm meeting with the new director this week oh, over a Laurie, coffee. Let's see what good. I can persuade her to do next. You never know. <laughs> she might come on. I think actually I think we need another cup of tea. We're going to be here another, <laughs> another three hours, I think. Yeah. You know. But I think that's uh, amazing because it's um, it's a voluntary thing. It's a it charitable thing. It is completely thing. voluntary. Yes. Just my time given up. And, and to be honest, I'm quite happy to do it because what was happening before is donations were being made, things were being given, and the animals weren't seeing any of it. That's so, right. And they can't see anything. That's right. But we can. Exactly. I'm so excited. Nice. When, when you I'm let, looking forward to it. When you let me know, I was like, yes, I'm so excited. Yeah, actually, you know, it's really good. good people. We need good people helping out. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so it's much. Been great. Oh, we appreciate welcome. you yeah. coming in. Craig. Really great do. to see you guys. We really do. That was so informative. <laughs> thank um, you. And again, we'll, we'll make sure that. Uh, all the information is on the website at spilltheteelive.com. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a connection to uh, Craig's stuff, stuff there. Yep. We'll have something for, for Paul Zanon. For Paul, when uh, he comes to town. And, and yeah. when he comes to town. Um, looking at some of the comments here, we've got we've got Trev. Hello mm-hmm. from uh, Kinchem in Bristol. Yeah. Oh, you did? That's, That's very from. good. Orlando. Um, Orlando. Laurie in Orlando. Hello from Orlando. Very nice. And uh, there's a familiar name. That's my sister. Sherry. <laughs> in Anderby Creek. Anderby She's Creek. not far from Skegness. Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, there's a quite a few different... Uh, we got... Oh, we got <gasps> oh, Patrick yeah. Littlejohn there. He's actually going to be a future guest, oh, so... Oh, I can't... Well, you know I'm going to be excited when Patrick comes on. Right, right. It's going Yvonne, to be me. I know you're on there, Cynthia, Dan. Um, Sarah from my hometown, Sheffield. Mark and... Uh, and, and Nicole, she she's, must be a very long way away, she I think. She must be. She Or she might just be standing over there. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, either way. Yvonne, she's she's actually an Anglophile friend of mine in, in L.A. So Cynthia Mason's also on the, the board. She's oh. one of the board members. Oh, we're back to the oh. And she's a massive Death Leopard fan. Again now. So Ow. she was very excited last week when you had Joe on. Oh, so, uh, yeah, that's why she's off listening. Oh, I'm sure I'll get and to meet her, And there's my boss too. on behalf of the company. Sorry for Craig's socks. <laughs> Thank you for the apology. It was quite shocking. <laughs> Sorry for the socks. That was fantastic. Awesome. Got a good sense of humour. It's been great, though. Yeah, yeah, this has been fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, You're very welcome. Craig. Thank you. Let me know when you need me again. we Will yes. do, for sure. For and, sure. And we'll do a little update on if we find any money for ourselves on yeah, the show. It'd be embarrassing oh, yeah. if we don't. Like, we didn't pay in. <laughs> I, I'm not expecting anything, no. <laughs> quite honestly. I'm really not. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a great show. Uh, thanks for everybody watching uh, in a, on, on the show as usual. Comments and shares and likes have been absolutely brilliant. Tell your yes. friends, tell your family members. Um, and I hope that you find that today's show has been entertaining and helpful at the same time. Absolutely. And again, as, as Sam said, please share, please like. Um, check out the website at spilltheteelive.com. And uh, and we're also going to be the the it's the podcast component's going to it's evolving. I mean, we're on Spotify now. Yes, it's, and it's going to hit. We're adding them as as we go. We, yeah, we've you know we have to wait for certain submissions to come back uh, on the different platforms that we we're going to be on. So as those become known, we will let you know. We will let you know most definitely. And uh, stay active on the page. I mean, we we do ask some fun questions. We the, do. The tea question was quite fun last week, and we've got one coming up this week too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. until next time, don't say it. I, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that this time. I think we're just gonna we're gonna do our our, our answer like we should do. Like we should do. No, no, this was great. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Craig. Thank, Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Until next time, this is spill the tea. <laughs>